So my, the title is Data Warehousing in 2010. First of all, let's try to say in one sentence, what is the purpose? What is our goal for this overall activity? We could call it decision support systems. That was the first name in the 1980s before Bill Inman, before the word data warehouse. We called it decision support. Then we called it data warehousing. Still, we call it data warehousing. And uh, for perhaps 10 years, the real word, the best word for it perhaps is business intelligence, BI. But this red sentence up here is, the, is what we do. We are trying to present the data assets of our organizations to, in, the, in the most effective way to support decision making. And the word data asset actually is an interesting perspective on large organizations. I think that uh, those words would sound very uh, strange a few years ago, uh, especially if you talked to someone who was trying to evaluate the assets of a large, any large organization, uh, a commercial company or a government or anything, what are the assets? Well, the traditional assets have been very tangible assets, like the equipment and the land and the maybe the possibly the know-how or the or, or the goodwill. But there's there, they were traditional things. But the, the the information content, the data, was uh, never really. Um, identified as an asset and certainly never valued in any understandable way as an asset. So, so that's the first perspective that I want to give you is, is um, the, the, there is much more realization that data itself is, is incredibly valuable. And so what kind of data is valuable, um, especially data about your customers, about your citizens, about your processes for uh, the things that you do, uh, about the, um, uh, the information about what the behavior of, of these customers are and what you have done with, with them. Uh, and and you, so that's obviously valuable. And, and there are some, also some fairly obvious ways to, to value those assets. You can value them by saying, what would be the cost of creating those assets if, if they disappeared or if, I, if they were lost? Um, what would be the uh, value in terms of the revenue or the profit or the money that comes directly from these data assets? So th these numbers are huge and they're very tangible and I think that management everywhere is very uh, much more aware of the value of data uh, of the data assets. So this becomes easier and easier as we go for in the, uh, through the years to convince people that they need to pay attention to their data and that they need the data. Uh, when I began in the 1970s being very interested in this problem, um, you could not get people to say that they wanted data. They had no experience with data. So how did people plan the inventory? They walked down the aisle and if the, the shelf was empty, they said, order more. That was the information decision-making process. Um, or if they had 100 stores. Because 100 stores is a, a large business, uh, they would plan every store exactly the same because they did not have the capacity to examine the detailed sales or to plan the inventory separately. And that was in the 1970s. And the 1980s, the 1990s, and now today, it, I, it, I'm almost embarrassed to, to talk about that because it's so obvious. Everybody, like you, <laughs> are trained to understand the value of data and, the, and the, using Excel spreadsheets and databases and, and all of the kinds of plans that you make with, with them. It's obvious. So I, I, I'm trying to give you a little 
historical perspective that we have come a long way, even though this point in some ways is very obvious. So uh, the thing I would say also here is that this challenge that uh, I am imagining that you have, that, that you are thinking about some kind of um, activity in data warehousing or business intelligence, that this is, uh, I call it a classy problem. It's a, it's a high value problem because it has several very interesting characteristics. It's a, it's a permanent problem. This problem is as serious or more serious today than it ever has been. It, the data is growing, the need for the data, the recognition of the data, the monetary value of the decisions being made with data is huge and very much you know, visible. It's not an easy problem. In fact, my, my challenge, I think, in this talk tonight is not to scare you away from data warehousing. I don't want you to leave the room and say, thank goodness, no more data warehouse. I don't want you to do that. I want you to say, oh, that sounds really interesting. That's something I would like to do. I hope I will do that. Now, I think to be happy as a data warehouse professional, as a business intelligence professional, you need to have three interests. If you only have two or one of these interests, you will not be happy in the long run. And all three are important at different times. First, you need to be interested in the business. You need to be, and I think you are. I mean, who you are here in this university perhaps tells me that this one is not a problem for you. You are interested in the business world. You're interested in how does a large organization work? How do they make decisions? I, you know, I, I love that kind of detail. Um, I find it fascinating to go to a very large company like Procter and Gamble or Coca-Cola or Bank of America or you know a, a big insurance company and say, "How do you process your invoices?" Literally, I mean, I, it's, I find that detail interesting. I find that process to be fascinating because you always learn something. Uh, intricate and complicated and you get insight into these things. So if that interests you, very good. That, that You need to be interested in that. If, if you're not at, at all interested, then, then maybe you don't like the data warehouse too much. Anyway, you also need to be pretty good with technology. You need not to be a computer scientist, not to be a big programmer, but I think you need to be a, I would say, a thoughtful observer. You need to be a sophisticated participant in the process of bringing this technology to the, to, to the decision makers. Because if you are on the business side, if you are a business um, person in a large organization, you may be the business, uh, you may own, you may possess the data warehouse. You need to have a good understanding of what is easy, what is hard, what is happening, what you should expect. And, and, and so that's the, the, and, and that means understanding the technology pretty significantly. But you also need, and I said this already once before, you also need to be interested in people. You need to be interested in why is this person happy with the computer, and why is that person not happy with the computer? And what is, why do they say, this is complicated? Or maybe they say, this is simple and fast, I love it. You need to, uh, you need to develop instincts and, and judgment about whether people can use computers. The problem is that if you're really good with technology, you can believe that everybody loves computers. They don't love computers. What they like is their business. And they will use the computer when it becomes useful. They will not program. 